Nate, you your what am I going to say to you, Nathaniel? I'm sorry. No. Okay, don't say that. <sighs> hey, guys. So I wanted to pop on live and chit-chat with you guys about um, my mat journey. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, I've got, I guess I got a lot of new followers. And a lot of you guys don't know um, that I've been on Suboxone and, or that I am on Suboxone. And so I thought that I could just go live and we could talk about it. And you guys could ask me any questions that you have about MAT. And I could answer them for you. So, come on in. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Uh, my name is Nicole. Okay. And I have been sober for eight years almost. Eight years in July. So close I can taste it. Okay. And I have worked very hard to get to where I am in my sobriety. <clears throat> it is very important to me. I take my sobriety very seriously and I try to help other people as much as I can, which is basically all the time. And the way I help heal is by sharing my story, answering messages here on line talk with the people on the phone all that kind of stuff right so i have been seeing a bunch of videos about mat treatment and people asking questions like um do you have to taper off suboxone um are you sober if you're on suboxone um and i wanted to talk to you guys about all that okay so listen up your sobriety has nothing to do with the medications that you're prescribed, okay? Sobriety is, is so much more than medication, okay? Sobriety is so much more than stopping taking drugs and alcohol, all right? That's just the beginning, okay? That's just the beginning. That's why you see so many people who are off drugs and alcohol, but they're miserable as fuck, because, see, they just did the beginning. They haven't done any of the other recovery steps. Okay? Getting sober and actually being in recovery takes a lot of hard work and dedication. I'm talking about major introspection. I'm talking about looking within oneself identifying your character defects and your flaws and then working through them and changing them being a better person treating people with love kindness and respect okay treating yourself with love kindness and respect no longer manipulating no longer lying no longer stealing okay um learning new coping skills on how to say stay away from drugs and alcohol um having a conscious contact with your higher power okay knowing what's best for yourself and not operating on ego and self-will anymore though that's what recovery is you can be on medication and be in recovery it has nothing to do if you're abusing medication and you're getting high then of course that's not staying sober right but there's many people who have to take medication for the rest of their life and they're sober, 100% sober, okay? Recovery and sobriety have so much more to do with your inner self, okay? Just quitting drugs and alcohol is just the first step to making changes in your life, all right? And honestly, that's the easy part. Stopping drugs and alcohol is the easy part. The hard part is changing everything. Because in order to stay sober, we have to change it all. We can no longer rip and run and gun with our old druggy friends. We can no longer, yes ma'am, uh, I am, I'm on a quarter of one milligram. We can no longer rip and run with our druggy friends. We can no longer be out there in them streets fucking hoeing and selling that ass. We, everything has to change. Okay? So, when I see people on this app trying to shame people who are on medication-assisted treatment, 
trying to tell people who are on medication assisted treatment that their recovery is not valid, you're wrong. You're wrong. Just because it didn't work for you and you don't personally do that doesn't mean that it can't help somebody else and help save their life. Okay, let me tell you a story about one of my first sponsors I ever had in Alcoholics Anonymous. Her name was Jean, and I'll never forget it. I was so afraid to tell her that I was on Suboxone because I was afraid that she wouldn't be my sponsor if I told her that. See, that's something that those of us who are on MAT, we have to worry about because there's so many judgmental people in recovery, especially in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. So I was so afraid to tell her that I was on Suboxone because I was afraid that she wouldn't work me through the steps. Jean has, she had 31 years sober at the time when I wanted her to be my sponsor. And I'll never forget it. I asked her to be my sponsor, but I didn't tell her I was on subs. It took me like a month or two. And then I finally told her that I was on Suboxone. And she said, why didn't you tell me in the first place? And I said, I was scared. And she goes, Nicole, listen to me. She said, I've been sober for 31 years. I prescribed Xanax for my anxiety. I'm prescribed medication Zoloft for my depression, and I have back pain, so I take opioids. I need those medications to have a quality of life. And she said, ain't nan nutta gonna say nothing to me about my 31 motherfucking years sober. And that's when I realized, holy shit, holy shit. There's people in the rooms that are fucking 50 years sober who have who are on all kinds of medications. You know what? They just don't go parading around and telling everybody what medications they're on. So that way they don't have to worry about hearing other people's dumbass opinions. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I share about being on subs was because in 2016, when I shared my story in front of God and everybody on Facebook, I was shunned from the recovery community for talking openly about being on Suboxone. And it felt like shit. And I didn't want nobody to have to feel the same way I felt ever again. So I started sharing my journey on YouTube about being on Suboxone and being in recovery and finding support and finding people that are like me that are in recovery. And well, the rest is history, y'all know there. But that's why I speak openly about it. But I want to talk to those of you guys that are on medication assisted treatment and let you know that you don't have to tell anybody really. And there's nothing wrong with being on prescribed medications. In the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, in the program of the 12 steps, it talks about having outside issues and having to seek help from a medical professional for those outside issues. It also talks about how we're not doctors and we're not supposed to give people medical advice or judge people that are on medications. You know, so if you have somebody that's giving you a hard time that because you're on MAT and they're telling you that you're not sober, they're telling you that you shouldn't be on MAT, the devil is a fucking lie. The devil is a lie. They are fucking lying. They need to get the fuck up out of your face and get off your page. Because if they're not there to support you and love you and, and be there to cheer you on, you don't need them in your life. Okay? You don't need them in your life. As long as you're taking your medications as prescribed by your physician, you're not abusing them, you're not trying to catch a buzz, you're not trying to do... You're not diverting them. You're not selling them to other people. It is okay to be on medication, you guys. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't let anyone shame you for that, okay? I'm so sick and tired of seeing people do this online. It's like so ridiculous at this point. Like we're literally losing people every single day to the disease of addiction, fentanyl, and we still have people on the fucking TikTok talking shit to people that are on MAT. Like what the fuck is wrong with people? I have PTSD from CPS, um, but not from my drug use. I have PTSD from CPS, and it makes me scared whenever, like, some I think something's happening that could be affecting my son. I freak out, and I get all overwhelmed and shit. Matt is medication-assisted treatment. 
such as like Suboxone, Methadone, Vivitrol, Sublocade, those kind of things. Le yes, Melissa. I mean, yeah, Melissa, Little Dick Energy. I know. Yeah, I never knew how, how judgmental people were either until I joined TikTok. TikTok is like social media on steroids, you guys. Let me explain something to you. I had been on social media for years. I didn't start my TikTok until 2020. And I had never gotten so much hate until I joined TikTok. Until I, until I joined TikTok. Hate comments, people trying to get me to lose my job, people reaching out to my boss, all kinds of crazy shit. People calling CPS on me. I mean, it was wild. It is, it is, it is like Reddit. Oh, I have to talk. Guess who was in my live today, Anonymous? I have to, I'll message you later. Because you're going to shit your pants. Um, you had a grand mal seizure, you know, I never had a seizure, thank God, but I was on benzodiazepines for 13 years. Yes, Melissa. And it was a whole conversation we were having support. She was totally supporting us over here, huh? Which I, but honestly, I think she's really young and she just is looking for somebody to look up to, you know? Oh, I work for Dr. B. And I work for um, the marketing team of Recovery Delivered. So, okay. Yes. So, I didn't know that I needed to taper either. Um, when I was in active addiction, I didn't ever think about that kind of stuff, right? Well, then whenever I was in treatment, listen to this, you guys. So, I was in treatment, right? And I'm like there and I'm sneaking Xanaxes into the treatment center, which is wrong. Don't do that. They catch me, and they grab them, and they throw them away, and they just, like, don't do anything else. So, for the next two weeks, I'm going through, like, hardcore benzo withdrawal, right? In the treatment center, not sleeping. It was horrible, horrible. Um, That's why I tell people on here, like, if you're struggling and you need to taper, 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 slow, slow, slow. And I'm not a doctor, but to me... Uh, telling people to taper is like just safe generic advice that you can give anybody. You know what I mean? Um, but if you can't taper, like it could be damaging to you, you know? Rachel, Rachel says I'm three days clean and holy shit, the cravings are hitting hard. How do I get these cravings to go away? Okay, Miss Rachel. Now I'm going to tell you something. You are wanting instant gratification already, baby. You have to work at getting the cravings to go away. It takes hard work and dedication, okay? And so it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen like this, right? What you're going to do is you're going to have to retrain your brain. So right now, if you're thinking about using, then what you need to do is identify that. Oh, wow, I'm thinking about using right now. Why am I thinking about using? Oh, because I'm three days sober. I'm probably still going through withdrawal, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to find a way to change the way I'm thinking. Let me go into a meeting where there's people that are talking about helping each other and recovery. Let me go listen to my favorite song. Let me go fix something to eat. Maybe I can make dinner for the family or something. Maybe I can go outside and get some fresh air and lay out in the sun. Like, Shift your thinking from thinking about using drugs to thinking about something positive. One thing that I learned about myself is that I would always say that I was craving something, craving something, craving. No, it's a thought. Okay, it's a trigger. It's it's a thought. That's a it's coming in, and we have the power to do with what we want with that trigger, right? So your trigger has no power over you. You have the power. The only way you're going to get high, the only way that trigger is going to own you is if you put action behind it. You have to get up and go find that dope, right? So now that you know that it's just a thought and you can kick that thought right out of your head. In fact, one of the main things that I do whenever I have a trigger and a thought of about using, you know what I do? I think about the worst thing day I had in active addiction, which you want to know what that was? It was the day I had to give my son to the CPS fucking worker. That was the worst day of my life because 
I didn't know them from Adam. They were taking my son from me. My little boy wasn't even one year old. He was fast asleep. So, if you're thinking about using, I want you to think about the hell that you had to go through to get to where you're at right now at three days sober. Okay, think about that. Use your memories. Use that shit to your advantage. Okay, think about the bad times. You have to retrain your brain because you know what? Listen to this. Your brain is automatically going to remember the way drugs made you feel good. It's called euphoric recall. It's like muscle memory. It's, it's, it's the brain's automatic it's so it's the, it's the the brain's automatic response to you being hurting right now is I need to get high because guess what that's all you've ever done so you don't know how to do anything else so this is a pivotal moment for you okay this is a moment where you can say I'm choosing not to get high I don't feel good but I'm not going to get high today. I'm going to feel the way I feel, and I'm going to push through that feeling. And I'm going to do something different today. Shit, you don't feel good? Go draw yourself a bath. Put some beautiful bubbles in the bath. Put your favorite song on. Shit, if you smoke cigarettes, smoke you a cigarette while you're laying in the bathtub. Come out and get yourself all lathered up with some nice smell-good lotion. Brush your hair out. Do a mask on your hair. A conditioning mask. You know, like, change your focus, change your thought, all right, I'm telling you that 100%, that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do, because the only way you're going to get high is if your fucking ass walks out the door and goes and does it, so you have the power now to choose that, say, I'm not going to do that today, I'm going to do something different, so I hope, I hope that helped you a little bit. I could tell, I, I could go on and on about it because I used to think that drugs would just like hijack me and make me go do things. You know what I'm saying? But what I realized is that I was like, I was giving into these substances because I, 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 I didn't have anything that I felt that was worth me living for until I had my son. And when I had Nathaniel and I started to see that I love my son more than life itself. And then I have my husband. Me and my husband got sober together. I love him. I don't want to hurt my family. I don't want to put my family in a financial position where we don't have money because I'm smoking all the drugs. Crack and lacka and all that bullshit. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose my son. I don't want to lose everything I've worked so hard for, you know? So in early recovery, I was fighting for custody of my son back, and that can be a debilitating experience, okay? A lot of women, when they have their children taken away from them, they don't get sober. They cave because they're hurting so bad that they don't see any way out. But what I did instead was I said, I'm, I got to do something. My son is depending on me. If I get high, he won't have anybody. Because I knew if I got high, my husband would get high too. And we would just all be high together. You know? So I knew that I had to be, I had to lead by example. You know? And I still do. I, I try to lead by example to keep us both on the same straight and narrow. And now we're doing really, really well. We have been for a while. I've been doing really well for a long time. And my husband's been doing really well for a long time also. Um, but we had to really start using something to make us want to live. Because when you get so bad off on drugs, you guys, you start just kind of being okay with not being... Like, I was okay with being, an, like, overdosing and dying, right? And so, when Nathaniel was born, it gave me something more to want to live for, you know? And I do not recommend people go out, going out and having babies to find a reason to live. <laughs> I am not saying that. I'm just telling you guys that what, that's what I had to do. And if, so, if you don't have a child... And you're saying, well, Nicole, I don't have a kid. What do I do? How do I find a... You have to find something that inspires you, that makes you say, I want to I live. 
I want to be better, okay? It could be you have a goal that you want to be a lawyer in two years or you want to be a marathon, whatever that is. And you got to set that goal and fucking let that shit, you know, fucking chase that shit. And, 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 and you got, that's what you got to do. You got to want to live for that. You know, you got to want to live for that. And that's what I had to do. Hey, Susie, thank you. I had to start teaching myself to live for me. Because after I got sober, and I had been sober for a while, you know, I love my son, but I got to start doing it for me eventually or else I'm going to fall off the wagon, right? So now I've been working really hard because I have goals in my mind that I want to complete, complete. Like one of them was to get off all my mental health meds and I have been able to do that. And now I'm learning cope. I'm, I already have a lot of coping skills, but I'm learning even more coping skills to help with my mental health, to help me stay healthy. My next goal is to lose this fucking weight and get into shape. And I want to do like, you know, like I want to bodybuild or do something fun to do competitions or something, something athletic. I don't know. I don't think I'll run marathons, but shit, I might try it. Who knows? But these are all goals that I'm having because just because I'm a mom doesn't mean I can't have, like, a life outside of being a mom. And so now I'm trying to think of things that will make me feel good and make me inspired even more, you know? And so if you are somebody who's struggling with addiction and you're like, I'm struggling to stay sober, you got to find something that inspires you to want to stay sober, you know? And that's another that's another reason why I like working with addicts and alcoholics. Because I'm never bored. Bitch, I never bored. I never have a day off. Okay? I just got a text message from somebody that I, I have to jump on a phone call with here in a little bit because I'm going to be helping them with their new YouTube channel. And they're going to be talking about, they're going to do a YouTube channel about gaming and recovery. <laughs> so, hey, I'm going to help them with it. You know? Recovering from gaming? No, he's going to do gaming and talk about recovery while he does his games on the, on the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dad. Yeah, buddy. Look. Hold on. Yeah, Susie. So, and you know, and a lot of people used to bust my balls about, you know, you need to get healthy all in my time. Like, if you've been watching me for the last, since 2020 when I started here on TikTok, then you've seen the, the just the growth in that time. You know, um, I had uploaded a video when I was six years sober here on TikTok. And in the video, I was talking about how I had no energy, how I was depressed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to stitch that video because now I feel totally different. Now I have energy. Now I'm not depressed. Um, like everything has come, I've come out on the other side of things, you know? And that fucking was hard work, man. Um, so even, even I have struggles, you know? The, the thing about it is, you guys, I might have struggles, but I don't get high no matter what. You know, like I don't go out and get fucked up. I'll, I'm honestly, I'm so grateful to have my husband because honestly, you guys, like if I was here all alone, it was just me and Nate, I might struggle a little bit, but I got my best friend with me. You know what I'm saying? And that helps me a lot. Hey, did you see my YouTube channel got deleted? But we're building a new one. I'm building a new one. So if you go to the link in my bio, there's a link to my new one. It fucking pisses me off. But I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm just going to be positive right now. <laughs> but... Like, you guys have been going through the journey with me. Also, if you watched me three years ago, I was 250 pounds three years ago. Now, I'm down to 207, and that's a huge accomplishment for me, you know? <laughs> like, what? That's like 40-something pounds lost. It took me a long time to lose it, but I'm losing it little by little, one day at a time, one step at a time, you know? One step at a time, baby. And, I, you know, I want instant gratification too, guys. 
I want to speak. I want to be a skinny goddess in one week. Okay. <laughs> and I have tried to find every way to do it. <laughs> you know, diet pills from fucking everywhere I've ordered, and as you can see, we're still not. They're still not completely working yet. <laughs> The way, the way that I lost weight was I actually start, stopped eating. I was binge eating. So, I would binge eat every night. Like, I'm talking late at night, I'd wake up and I would eat, like, a whole bunch of food. And so, that's how I lost weight, was by stopping binge eating. But recently, I have been overeating and I have been, I have been noticing, it, noticing it, you know? So, that's why I need to go... And get on a plan like with a dietitian and stuff because I don't want to gain back back the way I did lose and I want to lose like 30 more pounds, you know. But anybody can do this. Anybody can do this if you put your mind to it. Hey, what's up, baby? Oh, Caitlin, I'm so sorry, girl. I'm praying for you. What happened? Just. Is it just because of the stuff that, you know, you got going on in your body and that affects that? Kind of like a trickle-down effect? You know what I... You know what's always worked for me? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I, counting calories. Counting calories. I used to count calories like a mad woman. And I would eat about 1,200 calories a day. Drink a lot of water. And, um, and I wouldn't eat after 6 o'clock in the evening. And that's how I've always lost weight. But it takes me being very focused. Very focused, you know. And it also takes me realizing that just because you slip one time doesn't mean you ruin all your progress. And that's what I try to teach you guys that are in recovery too. Just because you have a lapse where you drink alcohol or you smoke or do take a pill, it doesn't mean that you've thrown away all your progress. It just means that you need to work harder and you need to identify, let me think, okay, I had a lapse. What was going on in my life? Was I stressed, overwhelmed? Did I have a fight with somebody? Was I overly happy? You know, there's like things that could be like celebrations, you know, where you're like, ah, I'm going to eat all the food and that kind of thing. Um, and identify that, you know? Oh, you did, Julia? Thank you so much. Fast for 16 hours, eat in an 8-hour window. Yeah, I've heard of that. So how's Wagobi working for you, Julia? You know, my sister, Michelle, she's shorter than I am. And she was, like, diagnosed with diabetes um, or pre-diabetic or something. And she's like three inches shorter than me. And so, but we're both heavy, you know? And so it makes me scared. Like, I don't want to end up with diabetes. And so, that's why I got to make an appointment with my doctor. Because I need to get help. I need help for this. 